Okie dokie. So I'm trying to keep myself on a certain schedule here out at my artist residence. I'm, I planned on producing three to five paintings, um, th three to five paintings a week. And that sounds super ambitious, but there we are. That's, that's what we do. Uh, unfortunately, I'm way, way, way behind schedule. I spent, uh, this, I'm in my fifth week here and I spent the first four uh, trying to get my crap together and uh, unfortunately sleeping late. By late I mean sometimes 8.30 in the morning which is ridiculous. Uh, I'm now starting to get up at 6.30, 7 o'clock. Hopefully soon I'll be getting up at 6, 5.30, 6 o'clock and uh, getting myself functioning at a reasonable hour because as it is I'm only getting out in the studio by 10. And that's, that's extremely unacceptable. That's really, that's um, disgraceful as far as I'm concerned. So, because I've got all this, I've got this time. It is the limited time. We're now down to 11 months and less than four weeks, or three weeks. So I've really, i got to get it together. And I devoted some of last week to, um, to a show and getting ready for that. And now it's time to... I've got to make up for those days in my head. I have to make up for those days, but I've really got to get some paintings finished. So uh, to help me keep the train moving, I also have to have uh, canvases that are ready to go. So I'm going to start gessoing some of my gessoed uh, canvases to help to help my head keep flowing. I have to have work in certain levels. Almost oh well done. Almost done about 75 to 80 percent of the way through, 50 percent through, 25 percent of the way through, just started and then ready to go. I have like a certain way I keep production moving. So in that, I'm going to start gessoing one of my Dick Blick canvases. I'm a big, big, big fan of Dick Blick. I love their canvases. I love the textures. I love especially the premiere galleries, uh, the Premier Wrap, they're wrapped really well. I can get fingerprints and goobs of stuff right down the back and it still doesn't matter to me because this makes it just look and feel more finished than a regular wrap, than a regular canvas, sorry. But I love Dick Blick, I love the gesso they use, I just love everything about them. I love the thickness, the texture, everything is perfect. It works really well. I've tried other, I've tried other canvases by uh, Jerry's, and there's a certain oily film to them that I, ugh, and they're not taut enough. It's they're just weird to me. But the Dick Blicks are perfect. Um, the other one I like is uh, the other canvases I really like are made in Brooklyn by Soho Artist Soho Artist Supplies, I think it is. When I'm getting my larger canvases, the four foot by four foots, with the three inch profile, the Fat Boys, which I love, I have to, you have to order those ahead of time. You can get pretty much any size you want, and they're handmade, they're handmade in Brooklyn, and then um, I pick them up in Soho just because, you know, who doesn't love Manhattan? But I haven't been able to buy one for a while, the f um, just because, you know, it's not just the canvas, then it's the trip and parking and the whole thing. So it turns into a big adventure that I haven't been able to do. Um, the shipping on them, on the Fat Boys, is prohibitively expensive for me anyway. I can't justify it. I would rather drive to the city and pick them up. I'd rather have the adventure and pick them up for a little bit less than have to pay more than the canvas cost, or just about the same as the canvas cost. But in the meantime, I've got Dick Blick, and Dick Blick makes me happy. There's, there isn't one nearby. I'm out in the middle of Virginia, or somewhere in Virginia. The closest one is in D.C., so that's like an hour and a half away, and then there's traffic. So I'm waiting till, you know, I have, I can really, I can really, um, I have a reason to go there. Like, I do need canvases, I do need aerosols, and I'm going to wait till I'm running, till I'm more out of, oils which are starting to deplete before I drive you know before I drive that distance. Anywho um 
I'm going to start applying my black gessos, and I think everybody who's been watching these videos know how knows how I do it. It's splashing it everywhere. But I build an abstract, like abstract design, abstract ideas, and then I put the aerosol down on top of it and go from there. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about today was. I am absolutely hooked on a video series called Art Assignment, on, and it's, they're made by PBS. I just love them. I, I've talked about them in several videos now, but I'm, whoops, okay, Goober uh, I really love Art Assignment, and I watched a video the other night that has stayed with me, and it's Fierce, called Fierce Women in Art. There's two of them. Fierce Women in Art 1 and Fierce Women in Art 2. And they talk about people like Yeo Kusama, or Kusama because I never pronounce her name right, um, who I've painted, I'm in the middle of painting for the second time. But they also talk about, I mean, they talk about artists throughout time. You know, they talk about the typicals, the Frida Kahlo's, etc. But they talked about a group called Gorilla Girls. And Gorilla Girls was a group that, that is around and started in the 80s. And I kind of completely forgotten about them. But those, those women are responsible for, for letting the public know um, how the inequality in treatment that goes on in the art, art world, art market. And it's something I've tried to ignore for a really long time. Um, the absolute ridiculous injustice of it, how, how women are treated. When we do something, it's more of a decoration. When men do it, it's genius, no matter what they do. And they were showing, uh, Gorilla Girls has shown how really nothing has changed between when they started in the 80s, I think 80, 81, and now. Um, what they did, what they originally did, and what they did again was they went around the city and put up posters showing all the big museums, Museum of Modern Art, uh, Whitney, Guggenheim, like all the big places, and how many women they, sh they show in a certain period of time, and some, or, or feature, and so most years it's zero. It's zero. <laughs> it's it's zero. I believe we are more than 50% of the population. Women are. And we're nothing. And it's astounding that in 2016 we're still having the same stupid ass conversation. Now when I applied to galleries in New York, and I applied to the big ones, like I really, you know, I have balls of steel sometimes. Um, metaphorical female balls of steel sometimes. But I realized when I was walking around, it was male art. It was male art. I mean, looking back, I don't remember seeing a single woman in the, some of the galleries I went in. And now my experience with one particular gallery is they'll steal from women they won't promote them. Not really. Not unless it's kitschy and cute and, you know, considered female-y, whatever that means. I mean, my work, I've had collectors write me and say, I, I had a, a Matisse. Oh, no. Was it a Matisse? It was a something. It was one of the big guys. It was one of the guys. I can't remember who it was, Matisse, it was one of them. I, uh, my work was hanging next to Matisse, but, um, oh, it was one of them. Anyway, uh, one, of, one of my collectors wrote and said, I took down my very big artist that everybody knows the name of and hung yours up instead. I mean, that's really something. Now, if the outside world, if the art world would view women's work as, as valuable, it would be a miracle, an absolute miracle. But, you know, the discrimination doesn't happen on just a high level. 
you know, in New York, in the New York art market. It is everywhere. I've had things happen to me and with my artwork that would never, ever even be considered done to a man. Not in a million years, not if the venue, co, co, uh, not if the venue, the gallerist, the gallery, the manager wants to keep breathing. So, yes, I'm frustrated. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, I'm exhausted. Tap dancing constantly as fast as I can. But that doesn't mean I'm going to throw in the towel. I mean, we've heard it before. I've told you guys several, several times before things that male gallerists have said to me. I'm not promoting your work because nobody wants it anyway. That's a dead, flat out, complete and total lie. It's just that that person didn't want to do the work that they needed to do to sell my work and to keep their gallery going, which is long gone now. So yes, I'm tired. I am so tired. And I would really love for someone else to be doing that. But I think as women, we have to be more tenacious than that. We have to say more than I give up. You know, if this is what we really want, if it's not really what you want, you can give up. You can just give up and go home. But as women, we have to work 10 times, 100 times harder than any man. We've got a bigger train to push if we want to make it. Because as women, we're not handed a thing. There's a lot of people out there that feel that way. But you go into any gallery, you go on any gallery's website, any museum's website, anyone in the art world, you visit their online presence or their physical presence, and you will see. We're not there, but we have to keep fighting if we want to be there. And, I mean, we're really fortunate. Right now, we've come after the Frida Kahlo's. We've, Kusama is still alive. She's the most highly collected painter in the world. The most highly paid for, collected artist living today. She's 87 and she produces every day. And in this country, we don't know who she is, but because of women like her holding that torch, maybe someday, somewhere in the world, people will go, oh my God, that woman just developed a whole new genre that has never been seen before. So we hang in there, and I'm not Franz Klein. I am Beck Lane. I paint the way I paint. I forgot where I was going with that, other than we hang in there and we just keep painting. We keep producing work. And we keep not taking no for an answer. Not taking no. We refuse to take, we refuse to take no for an answer. So that's the thing, is we have to keep refusing, refusing to take no for an answer. That's it. Alright, I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna go on uh, Periscope in a bit and get stuff ready so I can keep painting. Ciao.